There's something almost primal about the hunt for mushrooms in the wild. It's not just about foraging, it's about the journey. Traversing through the damp, earthy woodlands, the scents similar to what you'd experience at a luxury spa, and the birds in harmonious song around us. With each careful step is a chance to strike gold. Often the mushrooms will smartly disguise themselves among the thick layer of fallen leaves. I've been unsuccessful so many times mushroom hunting, and that's what makes it so rewarding when you finally find some. Today, my mushroom foraging friend Rue and his little dog Betty and myself were on the hunt to find some of the last mushrooms of the winter. Ah, oh, Rue, my foraging buddy, and Betty. How you doing, man? Are you going to be successful yeah. today? Oh, I'm going to smash it. Oh, oh. gosh. It's a bit aggressive, isn't she? <laughs> but she's the mushroom, the mushroom. She's a little smelling dog. Mushroom pig, yeah. Mushroom pig dog. All right, let's go find some mushrooms. Do it. Lovely oh, day. He's stunning. Getting deep into the forest now. Do you think we'll be successful today, Rue? Yeah. I think, I think so there's too. still a few hanging around. Yeah. It's very mo Oh, I see Ooh. mushrooms already. Yes. Not edible though. Nah. Well, at least as far as I know. No. <laughs> yeah. There's so many different mushrooms in this forest and some are worthwhile, some are not. Some are a bit close to potentially being poisonous. I think I just spotted one of those beautiful red amanitas. Mm. They stick out and there's some puffballs over there too. Send smoke signals with that. <laughs> that noise is yeah. eerie. Here's a trooping funnel and it's a giant, beautiful specimen. There's three in a row. And they're like mushroom guards guarding this area. I love how they just grow in lines as well. Yeah. Yes, Rue, a hedgehog, our first. That's it. And there's one there too. Let's have a look. They almost look like oystery, lobstery looking things, don't they? Until you flip them over and you can see why they're called hedgehog yeah. mushrooms. Hopefully we'll fill this basket up and I can make you a delicious meal. Mm, please. Let's keep looking. Oh, there's an old porcini. Oh yeah. Look at that. Good spot. It's one of our oh, most yeah. prized mushrooms, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's a shame. It's always such a shame to see them looking yeah. old in the wild. And you're like, I could have had this, but now going oh, back yeah. into the ground to feed some slugs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's loads of shroom action going on down here. Yeah, I can see lots of glowing white bits. I yes. Spotted something. You can see there's one here actually, but there's a pile over oh, there. There's loads. Uh, and these are wood bluets. Oh yes. And they've got a grey sort of lilac-y tinge. I love the look of those gills. Yeah. It's pretty. So and we can eat these? Yeah. And you know, we haven't had much luck with the hedgehogs no. yet, but at least we got them. So yeah. there's something that makes something it worth the while, right? bulk out my dish. All right, let's pick a few of these then. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about disguising the mushrooms. See, they're a little porcini or a bay belit. Oh yeah. It's a work of art, that is. Good, good spot. And we struck lucky again because, oh, yeah. look, hedgehogs. this is what we came out for. Yes. Oh guys, I can't wait to show you how these look when you're cooking them. Almost like scallopy. Oh, we got a bit of dappled sunroof. Oh. The heavens have opened, they are beautiful. What a scene. Beautiful. What a scene. There's nothing better than nature. This is turning into a lovely little harvest fruit. Mm. This is gonna we're, feed us for the weekend. We're gonna eat today. <laughs> I think um, one thing we need to mention as well, in terms of collecting mushrooms, mm. you never want to take all of them, do you? We need to leave some. Take a few and then leave a few as well. Yeah, definitely. And also what we're doing here is actually prepping them in the forest so that none of the mud spreads around all of the harvest, but also all the little trimmings mm -hmm. are going right back into the soil. Yeah, there's plenty here to feed all the little creatures that live on this floor and keep the nutrients in yeah. the forest. Beautiful. That was actually really successful. You got a nice big bag too. Yeah, yeah. Good weight on this. So we're going to head to yours now and cook something up over fire. Let's do it. Lovely. There's not much room left in my basket though. <laughs> Mushroom in my basket, I mean. There's not much room in my basket. All right, should we get a fire going, Rue? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's cook these mushrooms up. Oof. There's some really dry leaves. <laughs> so dry. <laughs> ah, 
two guys, one fire. And lots of smoke. <laughs> Good girl, lay down. Do you want a stick? Get your stick now, ready? You want a stick? There you go. Good girl. I wish Perfect. I was easily entertained with just sticks. All right, so these beautiful mushrooms we picked. I want to do something a little bit different with them today. And I've got my homemade miso paste. So I think I'm gonna make a lovely, rich broth. Warm in, it's cold. But before we do that, I wanna get some lovely caramelization on the mushrooms. So into a mixing bowl with the torn up mushrooms. I'm gonna add some chopped ginger, garlic, and chili from my garden. We'll get those tossed up with some soy sauce and into my really hot pan. Get all of that flavour over everything. How good does that smell already? It's wafting yeah. towards me. Oh. So I really want this ripping hot now, so I want to get some caramelisation on everything. I want to build a, like a base layer of flavour on the bottom of the pan so that when we deglaze it with our stock after that's all gonna come into that broth uh, we need to get this ripping we need to get some more heat there there you go nothing like a welshman's breath <laughs> to get the fire going oh yeah that's ripping now oh that smells good a couple more twigs for you there Now we're cooking guys, it's a bit windy, so it's not getting as hot as I wanted, which means they're sort of stewing a bit more, but that's gonna add a lovely flavor to the broth. It's camping, we're camping, aren't we? It's not gonna be perfect Michelin star. Just gotta roll with the punches. It's looking good though, and it's smelling good. Oh yeah. All right, so let's intensify this a little bit. I've got some seaweed flakes here. Let's get some of those in. They all just rehydrate in the broth. Mm. Next into the pot, I'm gonna add some bashed up lemongrass. Plus, I'll whisk together some of my homemade miso paste with some hot water. Once that's well incorporated, I'll add that to my pot. So how do you make your own miso? This miso actually took nine months to make. It's been a labor of love. A miso baby. Miso baby, <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> and I could have left it longer and it would have got more intense, but I was impatient. But it was just a, a mixture of koji, which is the inoculated grain mm. mixed with some cooked soybeans. And I just blend, uh, blend it all up, packed into a jar, and then let it ferment for nine months. And so now we're using it, it's got that rich umami -ness, and it's gonna be beautiful in this. And we actually don't want this to boil too much now because that will kill off some of those, the goodness, the good bacteria in here. So we can actually let this go a bit cooler, mm. which is good for you guys because you can actually see what's in the pot now because it's been so steamy. Now that we've added the miso, let's add some vegetable stock and let the broth gently simmer away and intensify for at least 15 minutes. I got you a few things from the garden to prettify it. Oh yeah? Oh, so look at you with your flowers. Got some fennel flowers, some nasturtium leaves, some Beautiful. borage. Ooh. Last remnants of summer. Nice, yeah, I think the nasturtium, that peppery wasabi flavor is gonna be perfect with this. Mm. Thank you very much. So what part of the world are these flavors coming from, guys? Yeah, it's inspired by Asia. Yeah. I think there's nothing better than aromatics on a cold day. Mm. And I think the aromatics with the earthy mushrooms is a marriage made in heaven. Oh, that is so rich. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. 
on a day where it's it surprising. Seems to be going from warm to freezing. Yeah, yeah. It's those mushrooms. The way they just release all that that flavour early mm. on is, is intensified. It just before serving, I'm going to stir through some coconut cream, break in some pak choy leaves, and then serve up. So you add a nice bit of freshness to the dish with that. Yeah, nice crunch. Add them last minute just so, so they don't overcook. And I'm also going to get some coriander in as well. Oh, my favourite. Oh, look at this root. Mm. Let's get that coriander a nice little stir in. This looks absolutely delicious. It's really come together now and it's basically ready to serve up. It's looking great. I think great. we get that into some bowls. And this is something you could do with noodles or rice or something like that too, but this is going to be so hearty now. All right, so we're going to top this beautiful broth now with some of my homemade fermented hot sauce, which I'm so excited about, and the recipe is on my Instagram if you want it. Plus, we've got some of those lovely flowers that Rue picked and some sesame seeds. Let's serve it up now. I am hungry and I'm cold, so this is the ideal meal. And finally, a little sesame oil. Ah, well, thank you for this. Cheers. Cheers. This should warm our, our little cockles up. Mm. Oh, Ooh, it's really good. The lemongrass. Oh, that is. And the mushrooms are meaty. Oh, I love that chilli, I've not had that yet, that hot sauce. Mm. Mm. I think your miso and the coconut milk has given it a really like nice creamy texture as well. Delish. One pot meal as well. <laughs> hitting, so easy. Hitting all the boxes. Yeah. You just have to go and forage your mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> now you can try this with any mushrooms. If you like this kind of foraging content then click, no, tell us below in the comments and we'll do more of it. I, it's actually the funnest thing, isn't it? foraging I'm and then down. cooking anytime you want to do it and Lydia usually comes with us and she's the best at finding the mushrooms so <laughs> you're the OG truffle pig yeah see you guys soon like share and comment and all that good stuff mm. delicious <laughs> <laughs>